In this video, I'm going to talk to Malbub Robin about his experience taking the FE exam. Malbub is a mechanical engineer and dedicated tutor who loves helping students succeed in their academics. He specializes in math, science, and engineering courses and uses creative techniques and teaching methods to assist students in understanding concepts that are difficult to grasp. He's going to tell us about how he needed to take the FE exam multiple times to pass and what he did differently before he finally passed the exam. But first, let me remind you that the FE exam, or Fundamentals of Engineering, is the first step to getting your professional engineering license. And through the videos on this channel, including this one, you will learn not only how to properly prepare for the exam, but how to ensure you pass the FE exam. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the FE exam. And please, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them in future videos. So let's jump right into today's episode. Malba, welcome to pass the FE exam. Welcome, how about I want to welcome you to pass the FE exam. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us today. Uh, my pleasure to be um, part of your channel and telling you about how I passed my exam. Yeah, no, we appreciate it because it is a challenging exam. And anytime we can hear from someone that went through the process, I think it's helpful for our subscribers for sure. So kind of to start off, can you tell us a little bit about your educational background and what field of engineering you're in? Um, so I graduated from the City College of New York, and I majored in mechanical engineering. Uh, the The curriculum in my college is a um, it's 130 credits. It takes about four to five years to finish. Uh, I graduated in 2018, and my background. Um, well, the problem with a lot of college students is that in college. Um, the classes you're so into um, focused on taking exams that students miss out on understanding the concepts of engineering. Like most of my classes, all you have is three exams and one final and the like exam dates come really fast that you don't really pay attention to what, exa what exactly you're learning. And for me, that was um, a, a very big issue and when I, and especially when I was taking around like five engineering classes per semester, um, like a lot of the material that was thrown at me, like I didn't have enough time to uh, spend time and really dive in into the material. So like, I kind of like, I didn't like breeze through the curriculum. I um, went through the curriculum without not uh, being able to obtain sufficient knowledge in the courses. Right, because so essentially what you're saying is, and I agree with you, is that students don't really have the time to really get into the engineering yes. concepts deeply enough to get a good hold on them. Yes. Because before they know it, they have to take an exam and they're just trying to study whatever they need to pass the yeah. exam. Yeah. And yeah, and like um, get the degrees. And this will show up when you're studying for your fundamentals of engineering exam because when you're up, when they give you a question, you have to know what formula to use. And a lot of the concepts are connected to each other. So um, if um, you're completely lost, that means that you don't have a great understanding of the concept. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you. And we're going to get into that a little bit because I do believe also that that's one of the reasons that a lot of young engineers struggle with these exams it's because we were kind of pushed through college in a way where it's very exam oriented figure out whatever's on the exam and pass it right yeah, pass it, yeah. and then you know do all the other stuff you got to do and you can't get into it so so i want to go there but first of all there was an article written by cnn called cab driver harvard dad covid19 victim and, you know, I was sorry to read it. It tells the story about your family and how tragically, you know, both your parents passed away, which was sad. But I know that you and your siblings, you've been strong, you've kind of, you've been going through it and you've been doing well together. But I'd, I'd like for you to talk a little bit about the experience and how it influenced your career. And how about oh, um, I have been um, 
uh, up against a lot of adversity in my life recently. My mom passed away in 2016 from colon cancer. It was like my um, third year in college um, that semester. Um, I passed all my classes, but like I, I was usually in the hospital spending time with her in the last days. And recently, um, after I did graduate, I worked for one year for uh, New York State Department of Transportation. And in the beginning of the pandemic, my um, father died from COVID-19. So um, at that time, I was studying for my FE exam. And um, I was working and I was studying for my FE exam. And that experience of coming from work and studying, it's, it's very tough because you work for um, eight to nine hours a day and you come home exhausted. And the last thing in your mind is using, um, using whatever energy you have left in you and studying for this exam. And you have to, if you're not 100%, then um, you won't um, put in that energy that you need to absorb that material. That's how, that's what happened to me. So um, I used to come, um, from work and my workplace was I had to drive um, 130 miles back and forth I lived in New York City and my workplace was in Poughkeepsie so I had to drive upstate and um, the, just the commute alone would uh, make me very exhausted and um, there's all, there was also work um, I worked for a civil engineering company um, it was a government job and um, yeah, just uh, the commute alone and whatever I did in work would uh, leave me exhausted. Like when I first started studying my, for my exam after um, I took my civil service exam for my job, um, for the first five months, um, uh, when I studied, um, when I was uh, like doing new questions, I used to look at the question and I was lost. I didn't like know which formula to use in the book. And the first um, time you took the exam, right? Yeah, per, the FE exam. The first time, right? Because you took it a couple first times. First time, yeah, I took it. Yeah, I took it twice. Right. So, so when your father passed away, you were studying yeah. when that was the first time you were taking it? Um, the first time I took it was August 2019. Okay. It was August 2019. And the second time I took it and I passed it in the second time was on um, March 2021. Oh. My um, father passed away um, uh, April 1st. Oh, wow. So oh, wow. it was, um, and. Um, so he was sick while you were studying. Yes, he, uh, he was sick while, um, yeah, I was studying. Wow. And um, so like um, after he passed away for like two months, like I didn't study, like that was um, like, I was trying to like recover from his loss. And after I did recover, I went back to study. However, um, I also got laid off at that time period as well, because um, as you may know, New York City was hit hard due to the pandemic. And um, the state um, had a huge deficit, was in debt. And um, so I got laid off because I was a um, provisional worker. Um, I was a provisional worker and I didn't pass my civil service exam. Um, so I got laid off. My father passed away on a April. I got laid off from work in June. And I started studying for the exam on um, starting um, October 2019. Wow. So, um, uh, yeah, so like um, uh, at that, like, um, at the, like when I was working and studying, um, like before my father passed away. So that was the problems. Those were the problems that I was mentioned talking to you earlier about. Right. However, like after um, I got laid off after I recovered my, from my father's loss, then I started devoting a hundred percent attention to passing this exam because I had nothing to do and I could use or I could pay attention, give 100% effort to passing this exam. Hmm. However, I did have um, prior to that, I've been studying for many months, except that I was very exhausted from working. And I couldn't give 100% effort to studying. And um, from my background, you may know that um, I 
kind of breeze through a lot of material. So um, I had to completely change my studying habits. Right. Because the way that I was approaching the studying habits that I had in college did not work while trying to pass that FE exam. You need you really need to understand your, the concept. You need to go over the concept many times. Um, it has to make it has to make sense to you. If it doesn't make sense to you, it will show up when you when you're studying. Because one of the things that I um, noticed is that in engineering, you are you're asked a question in numerous different ways. So you have to be ready um, for whatever way the question is thrown at you in whatever context. Um, a good example of that is like, let's say your typical mathematics question um, where uh, you have a, a circle, they give you the equation of a circle and they try to, they ask you for um, the equation of a tangent line to the circle. This is just a basic example. That question can be thrown at you at many different ways, but with uh, like um, various information, but it's up to you to understand what they're asking and to do it in a certain amount of time because you don't have much time left in the FE exam. Yeah. So, um, so Mahab, my, yeah. let's, I want to stop you for a minute because sure. I want to talk about, go back to something that you said a few minutes ago, which was you had to really fundamentally change the way you approach studying. And I want to, you know, revisit that a little bit right now, because okay. I mean, I know, first of all, obviously you went through a lot of adversity. I mean, adversity that, you know, I've never heard anybody talk about when they're studying. I mean, lost parents, lost job. I mean, a lot of yeah. stuff going on, but be, even besides all that, or maybe through that, it helped you to identify that, you know, you needed to change your study habits. You yes. only had some more time. But when you said you change your study habits for the people out there that maybe are struggling, they, they didn't pass the exam. Yes. What was it that you did differently? Okay. So what most people do, most people study off of the Lindbergh, Lindbergh, Lindbergh books, which I studied off of for mechanical, civil, other disciplines. So me as an engineering student, I've done this a lot of times. People, they look at the solution. They try to make sense of it. Then they do it. However, the, you're not learning much from doing that. You're supposed to um, look at that question, attempt it. If you don't, like when you attempt a problem, if you don't, um, if you don't know how to do it, that, that, that's a signal that maybe you lack the concept or maybe, um, you don't know what's going on, like something's wrong, like something has to like click into your head that um, it's like, you know how when you look at a question, uh, you're supposed to know what to do. If you don't, like if you attempt it and like um, you don't like you don't finish it for whatsoever reason and you then you look at the solutions, the, you're supposed to like understand the solution. If you don't understand the solution and you just like replicating whatever the solution um going through it and then um doing it and hey i got the answer it's not effective and it will not work in the long run yeah no I, you know what i, I agree with you 100 percent. i think that a lot of engineers try to copy the solution maybe yeah. change out the numbers and try to yeah. remember the way to do those types of problems so when they experience a similar type of problem on the exam they'll just use the same equation they'll fill in the blanks they'll get the answer yeah but and believe believe me, you will not get the same questions on the FE exam. It's no, you won't get the same questions as in those books. Yes. And but to your point, I think that not only is that a good thing for those watching to think about in terms of the exams, but in terms of your engineering career as well, it's the same yes. type of thing, right? When you're, you're thing, working yeah. on bridges, and you have to design a bridge the one bridge you're designing is not going to be the same as the next bridge. You have to understand the methodologies, the concepts, the reasoning for using certain equations. You might have to understand the materials. So I like, I like what you're saying. So the next question is how does one study in a way where they really can understand the concepts as opposed to just plugging into equations? Okay. So, um, as I mentioned before, I completely changed the way I studied. Um, what you have to keep in mind is that, don't compete against other people compete against yourself always um try to be better than you were yesterday forget about everybody else 
and forget about how, um, cause you know, some people, they pass that exam in their first attempt. Some people pass the exam after studying for two weeks. Other people, they don't study. I had someone, I had a classmate who went to the FE exam drunk and passed it in his first attempt. And um, so you have to- um, You're watching, I don't recommend that. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, like you have to um, set, people have different strengths and weaknesses. So you have to focus on your strengths and you have to figure out the person type of person you are. And you have to accept who you are. That's like the mental game to like first um, right. studying yeah, before you study. Okay, so um, in terms of like actually studying, um, I, what well, I did- now, Give us a sample study session for you. You sit down okay. to study, take us through the study session. Okay, so I could actually show you. So I'm gonna pick out a random date where I studied. Okay. So let's say um, this date right here, um, 12-23-2020, I finished two things. Mechanical system design pages 608 to 612, um, um, fatigue analysis, and chapter 14, first edition, problems one through eight. So you have to break down your studying skills into small ch chunks. And um, it's, a, it's a long term game. And uh, do you, um, what you have planned for that day, get it done, and feel happy about it because that confidence is going to. Um, encourage you to study more and don't be difficult if you're up against a question that you don't know how to do. Um, just uh, do your best. Um, look at the solutions if you need to, but try to make sense of the solution. Go back to the same problem after many days and um, try to redo it without looking at the solution. And um, yeah, like, uh, what is that a study journal you have there? I wrote like each day that I studied, yeah. I wrote you down, hold that up in front of oh, the sure. camera. Like, just just one, one, um, yeah, like just so one. You day. have the date and you had a couple of I've, goals that yeah. you wanted to achieve for that. Yeah, day. and I have the exact problems, the solutions, and everything that I studied. And like, I just did, I just, I did this for many months. Like, is um, that the second time when you were really, yeah, focused? second time, yeah, second time, and you found that that process cutting yeah. it down into small steps, yes. little goals each day, helped you to spend time on those things and learn the concepts. Yes. yes. Okay. And um, I, okay, so first time, um, uh, what I, um, I studied from the Lindbergh books. Um, I filled the FE, I didn't, I filled the FE exam because this topic that I struggled in was math, engineering economics, probability statistics, ethics, those four, I, those four topics I really struggled in because the Lindbergh books, they don't cover that. So I had to get another course. I had to purchase another course. That course really made the, like, it really um, made the game changer for me. And like, I had, made, had helped me prepare for those courses. But what the Lindbergh books did do was it, pre it prepared me good for thermodynamics, fluids, heat transfer, circuits, and mechanical system design. I would recommend the, um, well, this is if you're a mechanical engineer taking the FE uh, mechanical. So the there are certain topics that the Lambert books help you with and other topics that the Lambert book don't help you with. So um, I, purchased, um, uh, I purchased a course, um, so which had uh, those topics that I struggled in and statics and mechanics of materials because statics is like the fundamentals for everything. So you have to know your statics really well. And um, yeah, that course really helped me with um, those topics. And after taking the, um, while preparing for the F exam the second time, I went through everything, like um, the topics that I struggled in, my strengths. So I put all that together and yeah, I passed. So, so basically the second time around you had more time because you didn't have a job at that point in time. So you, I mean, it's not that I had more time. I had more resources. What, what do you mean by that? More, more resources. I had resources. Um, like the courses. Geared, the yeah. Courses. Geared towards what I was struggling in. Okay. So you had the right, you kind of filled the gaps of what you Yes. Finally, yeah. You don't think it was the fact that you had more time. You were just studying in a better way. 
in a better way, yes. Okay. So one thing I want to ask you about is taking the exam for a second time, okay? That's yeah. something that a lot of people deal with. First of all, if you're out there and you didn't pass it, definitely take it again because the PE license is super critical in your career and we wouldn't want you to yeah. give up after one time. But what I want to hear from you, Mahabub, is that's a mental yeah. challenge when you fail an exam and now you have yeah. to re get your, you know, you got to amp yourself up again. You got to study again. You got to go through the process again. Talk to me, not so much about the studying side of it now, but the mental side of staying focused and pushing yourself to have to go through the same process again. Okay. So, um, I also have a therapist and he told me that there are certain things in life you could control. There's certain things in life you can't control. So whatever you can't control, you can't control. So you focus on things that you could control. In terms of the FE exam, you could control your calculator. You could control all the questions that you did over and over again, and you could control the topics that you're good at. What you can't control in the FE exam, you can't control your competitors. You can't control the curve, and you can't control what questions you're gonna get. So my advice is that focus on your strengths. Focus on your strengths because you're, um, because in the FE exam, um, when you're taking it, you, the answer is that the question, when you get, um, you get points on the questions that you get correct. If you leave a question, you f if you don't answer a question or um, skip it, you don't get, um, you don't lose points. And um, it, another important thing is that, um, like I had a mental preparation going into the exam. Like I'm a very slow um, test taker. So one of my biggest issue was finishing the test in time. There's 110 questions in the exam. My, my um, goal was that, my target was that I knew that I was not gonna answer all 110 questions because there's gonna be a lot of questions that you don't know how to do. Right. So you only focus on the questions that you know how to do. And you have three, you have approximately three minutes to answer each question, right? Right but you don't, you have questions that you don't know how to answer. So in the exam, when you, when you're up against a question that you don't know how to answer, you flag it, you move on, but you focus on the questions that you know how to do. If you do that, the questions that you know how to answer and the questions that you don't know how to, how to answer will like, well, um, there'll still be a balance. Right. And you won't run out of time. Yeah. So what Mahabub is saying here is really smart in that if you take the total number, the total amount of time, and you divide it by the number of questions, you're going to get, you know, whatever it is, three minutes yeah. per question. But if you skip 10, 15 questions that you know you're not going to get, you've just added more time per question to help you. And you know how to do. Right. To help you make sure that you get yeah. the ones right that you can do. And that's a really good approach. And I, I agree with you, I think. And just imagine it in the reverse direction. If someone spends 10 minutes on one problem that they're not going to get anyway, you just killed the rest of your problems by taking more time yeah. away from them. So that's a really good, really good focus. So one other question that I want to ask you about, um, you know, somewhat unrelated to the exam, but, but related. I mean, you went through a lot of adversity. Yeah. Um, you lost your dad, you, you uh, lost your job. I mean, yeah. you know, that's a lot to deal with. And how did you stay, like, what kept you going through everything? Okay, so you have to take life, you have to take each day, a day at a time. You have to take life, well, this is just not, just not for that exam, this is like, my perspective of life you have to take each day slowly um like break it down like what am i gonna do next i'm i'm gonna um have lunch next so you try to get past the next step each day and feel proud about it that you made it to the next step so even though you're going through a lot of adversity a lot of challenges are coming in your way you have to find something that you will be proud of something that will motivate you to go to the next step. Whether that doesn't have to be like knowing, learning your material, it could be like simple thing. Like I make it to the next meal. 
Yeah, that's great. And yeah. if you keep um, doing that, breaking life down to very small things and feel proud of those small achievements, when you work towards that big achievement and you achieve it, like you're really gonna like feel proud of yourself. That's how, um, that's how I did it. I mean, like I used to, as you saw, I broke down my day into whatever I'm gonna study. Mm -hmm. And um, I studied it. Um, the week before my exam, um, I wanted to do like 100 questions each day, but I never got to 100 questions because I didn't want to burn myself out. So I ended up doing around like 40 and 50 questions each day, like a week prior to my FE exam. And um, I timed myself. I like I t I try to replicate the test taking scenario as best I could in my house, but you can never do it perfect because it's like a lot of stuff happening in your house. Mm. So um, I did the best I can, and uh, uh, I was um, I was able to uh, I was able to do it. So yeah, and you have to take life very slowly and just um, accomplish one step at a time. Yeah. And um, learn from your mistakes, learn from um, what you did uh, wrong and um, just keep moving forward one step forward. Even if I did fail the exam, I would not feel sad that I failed the exam. I would feel proud that I'm one step closer towards passing the exam. And um, if I, if this, at this attempt, if I, yeah, if I did fail, then I would have developed my studying um, even more. Like, as I was telling, my next step would have been to, like, completely change the way that I studied and, like, um, study in a way that no matter how, which way you would um, give me a question, I would be able to um, answer it. And if I did not know how to answer it, then there was some um, lack of understanding in the concept. So that's my lesson that I learned. No, that's great. I mean, yeah. You know, there's a great book uh, called Zen and the Art of Happiness by a guy named Chris Prentice. And the, the theme, he talks about the theme of the Zen philosophy, which is everything that happens to you is the best possible thing that can happen to you. Yeah. And I, you know, in my conversation with you today reminds me of that book. And that theme is that you got to take it one step at a time. There's positive things that are happening to you every day. Yeah. You need to pull those out and you need to build momentum on those yes. into the next day. And, and that's great. And it's great to hear you say that because I know a lot of engineers out there struggle with this exam. It uh, is a big roadblock for them in their careers yeah. at times. Um, and you, I think you really helped them here today. And I just want to kind of recap a couple of things that Mahalo told us yeah. here. Um, one of them was, I mean, I think the big theme of what Mahalo has shared with us is that you need to understand the concepts on this exam. You're not going to get away with plugging and chugging on equations. And oftentimes we study too quickly and we take some of these reference manuals, which are great, but we just take an equation and we try to replicate it on another problem. And that's not going to necessarily work for you. What I also liked a lot about what Mahalo says is even though for some portion of time, he didn't have a job, it wasn't the time so much that helped him to study more effectively. It was his approach in the studying. It was planning out his day in his daily journal not taking on too much each day, having just the right amount of tasks. It was making sure that if he didn't have the right materials to cover the specific topics on his exam, he had to go out and find them and supplement the materials that he was studying with to make sure he had everything covered to understand the concepts. And, you know, I think the last part of it is just, you know, you have to stay focused and understand that it's a long game. This yeah. exam is not something you're going to study for a couple nights. You're going to take it and you're pass it. Very few people do that. You may also have to keep in your mind that you may need to take it a few times. And like Mahabub said, maybe the first time is just helping you to be able to, you know, take it more effectively the second time. And if you kind of kind of wrap your head around those things, I think it'll help you through the process much more. So Mahabub, thanks so much for like spending some time with us here. And really, I know you're, these are some things that you probably went through that were very challenging for you, but I'm happy that you were able to come on here and share them with uh, our audience and give them some tips for helping them with their exam. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, my pleasure. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will answer more FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. 
Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly. So please be sure to click the subscribe button and you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And these are tips that you can't get anywhere else. And believe me, you won't want to miss a single video. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below that I will read and respond to in future videos. Maybe there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or a specific question that you need answered. Pass the FE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE exam.